Alright, you ready for me? <laughs> ready to go? <laughs> Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in to Forward Obsessed. I've got a really awesome guest here today, a childhood friend of mine who's doing some amazing things in science and technology right now. Um, I'm going to let her introduce herself because I will really ruin that if <laughs> not. Um, we're going to talk about a lot of things today, next-gen workforce. We're going to talk about overcoming sort of cultural mm -hmm. norms and then breaking out into new things. So Jackie, please tell the audience a little bit about who you are and some of the amazing stuff that you're doing. Okay, so that'll take a while. All right, <laughs> listen, I'm, we're here for a while, so let's so, do it. So, hi everyone, I'm Jackie Garifano, and as Pete said, we grew up together. So I'm from Milford, Connecticut, born and raised in Connecticut, educated in Connecticut. Um, I am a doctor of material science and engineering, a UConn graduate, and I currently am a program manager at United Technologies Corporation for the Margaret Ingalls Engineering Development Program. So I'm a month into that gig. Previous to that, I was a research scientist at the Research Center of UTC out in East Hartford. Yeah, so just obviously, for those of you that, <laughs> like me that don't know what that means, it's <laughs> some really, really amazing stuff. I remember when you were going through your PhD program and I was thinking about having to call you doctor and yeah. it was sort of throwing me off a little bit. Um, talk to me a little bit about, in the audience, about how, for one, like, I know this, the audience isn't like, yeah. you're the first person in your family to go to college and yeah. really finish that. So yeah. what was that like for you being, you know, a young woman scientist going to school? I mean, that yeah. must have been tough given some of the, you know, what things looked like at UConn at that time. Yeah. So I went to high school, public education, Milford Public Schools, and I really just had a fascination for astronomy, firstly. And so I thought, hey, I want to go into astrophysics. Right, I want to work for NASA, which is still a dream of mine. So uh, I will be applying. <laughs> so you were the woman, Sheldon Cooper. Right, yeah. uh, but <laughs> sort of <laughs> not as cool. Not as cool. Um, so I went to uh, pursue a bachelor's of science in physics from Southern Connecticut State University in New Haven, and there was the opportunity that I had the catalyst of a really fantastic mentor, and her name is Christine Broadbridge, who essentially took me under her wing and showed me about what material science was. Because coming up through high school, it was chemistry, physics, and bio, and maybe you throw in astronomy. Okay. So there was STEM wasn't a thing. So really? science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, which is um, so critical to all of what we do in the engineering and tech space, um, I didn't grow up with that. So coming up through the 90s and the early 2000s, I knew that I wanted to go to college, but as you pointed out, I'm the first generation. So right. however many people I can reach to say, you can do anything that you want to do. You could go to college, you could go to trade school, you can go out into the workforce, you could become an entrepreneur. Absolutely. So it's so important for anyone to just dream big and follow their dreams. So for me, coming up through Southern um, as a woman scientist, right, we're still a minority today, but even so, if you think 12 years ago um, totally. or more, um, it was challenging. But the thing about it is, you surround yourself with good people. So I was at a university that was totally supportive and it's in New Haven, so it's culturally diverse, which is fantastic. And so Christine had, you know, sort of guided me and encouraged me to get a PhD because that's what I wanted to do, right? right. Type A, you just want to yeah. go big. Um, yeah, sure. So that's what I was able to do. And because of the fact that I, I've leveraged networking connections all through my academic career, through college. I was able to um, get into the UConn's program for material science and work for a renowned microscopist. So, wow. um, you know, you're, you're probably used to, um, you know, just binocular microscopes in mm -hmm. high school or middle school. Um, I was working on electron microscopes, wow. looking at columns of atoms, right? So you talk nanotech um, and, and that sort of realm of things. So my dream of being a uh, astrophysics, like looking at the cosmos, on I shifted completely to a, the opposite size scale yeah. of micro and nano, just wow. because That's I amazing. had the opportunity to really just get into the lab and learn and grow. Yeah. So my pursuit of a PhD was simply because I enjoyed science. I loved science. I love learning. I'm a lifelong learner. Right. Um, and so I had a really great opportunity at UConn and was able to do really amazing research. And that propelled me to getting a job in the research sector for United Technologies. Again, born and bred, educated, and working in Connecticut. So 
I don't think I'll ever leave Connecticut. Um, my awesome. husband and I, our roots are planted here, so it's um, it's my passion to give as much back to Connecticut as I possibly can. And I think it's super easy for, you know, obviously we're sitting here filming this in District mm -hmm. New Haven, right? And I think it's really exciting, the change. You mentioned Connecticut quite a bit, mm -hmm. the change that's happening right now. But one of the things that is inspiring to me, you know, I've known Jackie my entire life, and <laughs> I'm learning things about Jackie in this conversation mm -hmm. that have never come up, right? So what I think is yeah. really interesting is when you think about a conglomerate like United Technologies, mm -hmm. um, especially now with the sort of breakup and the different business units, you know, we don't often think about the science, the right. material science and the research that goes into creating these, you know, giant mm -hmm. jet engines and, yeah. you know, aerospace technology and that sort of thing. So tell me a little bit about the role that you play now, obviously pretty new into the role as a mm -hmm. program manager, but what does it really mean to be a program manager working for United Technologies? Like what's that look like um, for some of the, the folks watching this that are saying, well, this is amazing. Like right. what can I do with this PhD program? Right? Because a lot of times we yeah. talk to folks about how am I going to use my education? How am I going to mm -hmm. apply that? And I think your application of it is a really unique one. Sure. Um, so I'd love to sort of hear a little bit more about how and what that plays a role in, because I'm mm -hmm. even a little sort of blind to that, if you will. Sure. Yeah, so, you know, having any sort of college education, whether what whether it's a bachelor's, master's, or PhD, right, you're learning the critical skills, analytical skills, the technology skills, whatever your discipline is. And so at the research center, supporting the whole entire corporation of products, right? So Pratt & Whitney engines or Otis elevators um, or fire suppression systems out of uh, Carrier, there's products and there's systems, but yet the fundamentals of the physics and the makeup of those particular things is all grounded in material science or mm. physics or chemistry and the way that, you know, the structure property um, processing relationship happens. And so that's really what's fa so fascinating because when you really drill down, you can appreciate that we can make airplanes fly, um, but there's so much in that system. And yeah. so it, it not only takes, you know, the scientists that are doing the research, but also um, the, the people that know those uh, mechanisms in and out that know the business to be able to go out and market to be able to have the communication skills to be able to um, leverage customers so the whole enterprise is like a, a working machine yeah and so it takes everyone so it doesn't matter necessarily like if you want to pursue a technical or engineering degree there's so much that people can bring to a corporation like UTC right. where they could still be a part of that magic that yeah, happens. Absolutely. It doesn't matter if we're designing a jet engine mm -hmm. or a Kevlar vest or whatever it right. is, the, the principles, the first principles, mm -hmm. the, the scientific principles of that and the scientific method, you know, we do a lot of design thinking here for, right. for how we do things. It's very similar to what you're doing right. as a scientist, absolutely. right? Absolutely. What I want to get into, which I think the, the group is interested in is this idea of foundation, mm -hmm. right? So, you talk about scientific foundations yeah. that have enabled you in your career mm -hmm. and enabled others to do amazing things. You know, I've always known you, you you've always had that sort of mindset of mm -hmm. progression, right? right. There, yeah. there wasn't going to let some, something hold you back. Mm -hmm. yeah. You obviously, I've always known you to be pretty <laughs> outgoing. My yeah. question for you is for young and emerging leaders, mm -hmm. specifically young women leaders who are going into careers that you know, or oversaturated for, you know, I think we use the term, uh, what were you saying earlier? Pale, male, stale. Pale, male, stale. <laughs> I mean, definitely pale, yeah. definitely male, hopefully not stale. But it, in all seriousness, right, when, when we need transformation requires unique thinking and mindsets, right? Yeah. And I think you have always had that grit and that tenacity. Mm -hmm. I've seen this since you were a little kid, yeah. right? So help me understand, for someone that doesn't think that they can do this, right? Mm -hmm. For someone that's like, wow, like my parents didn't graduate from high school mm -hmm. or my parents didn't go to college or like I don't have any money or whatever it is like, and I'm not as outgoing as right. Jackie is. Yeah. Like maybe I'm a little bit more introverted or shy. Like help, what are some key techniques or tips that you can recommend that sort of helped you and continue to help you yeah. in the workforce to overcome some of those obstacles? Because I think for some, it's easy for us to sit at yeah. this table now in our careers mm -hmm. as, as well established they are, but I want them to understand a little bit more about like, Jackie and like how they can follow some of the ways that you've done yeah. 
to get on their career, if that's helpful. Sure, yeah. So I love sharing with people that the woman that I am today is not the same girl that was 20 years ago, right? It's that growth mindset. It's, for me, what I value most is the soft skills, but now they're called power skills. So having EQ. I actually had the opportunity to take my EQ test and I was super excited about those results. It's amazing. Um, and so power you know, skills, I like power that. skills. What do you mean by power skills? Tell me well, about that. Because, you know, having empathy, having self-awareness, um, being kind and compassionate, um, being able to talk to people, to hold a conversation, to not be afraid to, um, you know, be your authentic self, which I think is so important. Um, my authentic self is so random uh, and just eclectic that I just, that's what brings me joy is to be confident in myself right. and I've had to grow to get there and also right? throw out the labels too right you absolutely know, like, you know some of the interests that you have you know I know obviously like definitely tell the group you know what are some of the things that you wouldn't expect a scientist that looks like you to yeah. be doing on the weekends so I'm a waterfowl hunter <laughs> <laughs> um, licensed for two years um, my husband grew up with his uncles hunting uh, waterfowl which is ducks and geese and we have plenty of those here in Connecticut and um, I was like, I went out a few times as a spectator, like a scout, and I was like, if you can't beat them, join them. So I went and got my permit, and uh, so now I go out there and go hunting and take selfies and pictures of the sunrise and maybe, you know, get some birds. Um, but really, I love being in nature, and so that's something that my husband and I are able to do together. Um, it's great team building, especially because of the environment that you're in. It's like very stressful. Um, you're relying on other people to be safe um, with what they're doing. And so it, it's fantastic knowing, like walking around my workplace when I was at the research center and having the guys that were in facilities like come up to me and be like, hey, you're a hunter? Yeah. Like, hey, what's your bag? And so, you know, based on just appearances, you might not know that I'm a doctor of engineering right. or that I have, you know, this eclectic random love for going out there and saying I'm a waterfall hunter. Yeah, um, I'm also passionate about giving back to our community. So empathy and compassion is something that I just, I, I want to make the world a better place. And even if it starts so small, um, just by a simple smile, right? Mm-hmm. Having that empathy and just, Compassion for right. humanity, right? Awesome. Which is something that we, we really need right now. <laughs> How'd you learn that? So like, I mean, you know, these power skills. I want to yeah. spend a little more time yeah. on these power skills because I think I love that you call them power skills yeah. and not soft skills because, yeah. you know, coming up, like I was really shy when I was mm-hmm. younger. You know, obviously you guys were family friends, so yeah. um, <laughs> I felt comfortable around you guys, but I was very shy. Like I wanted to be behind my computer screen. And now as leaders, right. you know, yeah. we're inspiring others and we're motivating others and we're managing others, right? right? So there's a whole different set of soft skills or hard skills or power skills, yeah. which I'm totally stealing. <laughs> we'll quote, we'll quote <laughs> or use it. But how do you develop EQ, right? You know, some say like your, you know, leaders are made, leaders are born, mm-hmm. same thing goes for some of these skills. Like, what would you say to someone young, you know, what, A, what's the importance of, of these power skills? And B, how do you develop them in a situation where you're not surrounded by them, right? You, right. you weren't really surrounded by a lot mm-hmm. of these power skills, you know, no. knowing where you come from and, and sort of how we grew up. How do you develop these power skills? Like, did you have some, are there some training things? Like, how do I learn about power skills if I don't know about them? Yeah, so I'm learning about them sort of late in life as yeah. to what benefit they give you in the workplace, especially being, you know, a minority as a woman in a, a technical discipline, right? Absolutely. Or for the various different, you know, walks of life that we have here. A lot of times, you know, the evolution of our workplace and our workforce has gone from you know, very homogenous to now more diversity and parity and equity, which I think is so important. Mm. Um, And for a a long time, these these voices have been stifled or Mm. they haven't been empowered. And so for me, I'm taking a page out of your book, right? And I'm like seeking who in, you know, in the broader workplace or um, leadership community is talking about this right. or, um, you know, like writing about this, doing the research, providing skills, like not necessarily handbook, yeah, sure. but learning and, and being a sponge and soaking up all the information. Any good books or like videos or anything that you could recommend for, so, for young leaders? Um, this year I went on like this professional 
um, development journey for myself, just like thinking like, okay, I aspire to be a leader. Mm. What does that mean? And how do I get there? And so, you know, I've had all of these yeah, um, you know, like power skills my whole life, right? Like I'm very compassionate. I would always give my time and my dollars and my, you know, whatever I could do to help other people right. um, is something that's really important to me. And, you know, my mom would say like, hey, I'm bringing Jackie up the road to, you know, the corner store and she'd like throw a penny in there, right? right, right, right. I didn't teach her that. That's just something that she would do. Right, right. Um, and so I feel like it's innate. I certainly have the grit yeah. Um, and to say like, I'm, I don't care what barriers I'm facing. I'm just going to, you know, do my best and be my authentic self. And you're going to, you're, if you're not on my side, you're going to come to my side, right? Yeah. Because it's, it's about teaming. It's yeah. about building community, um, for, to serve a greater purpose. And common ground too, right? Absolutely. One of the things that you mentioned earlier, which I think is, is so relevant to me mm-hmm. is this idea of like. There were these facilities guys, right? Mm-hmm. And they and they they and you had nothing in common. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. But then when you found that common interest, Absolutely. right? Part of that EQ is like being able to put yourself in someone's shoes and then putting yeah. them in yours, right? Yeah. So now you have all these friends, these colleagues, these these people that, you know, look up to you and collaborate mm-hmm. with you and they don't just see you as the label that mm-hmm. society or bias right. or gender or culture or whatever has yeah. sort of placed upon mm-hmm. us. So I think, you know, I love that getting to the topic of next gen workforce mm-hmm. right which is something that like what is the future of the workforce right mm-hmm. and everyone's sort of asking me that i've gotten a lot of messages on that mm-hmm. privately yeah. about like what's the future leader look like you know um and by look i don't mean the color the of their the skin makeup, yeah. or the makeup of you know mm-hmm. as a physical being but really like what are those internal systems that mm-hmm. come about those power skills that you talked yeah. about so i know as a program manager now you're sort of stepping back from some of the day-to-day research that you've done for so long and now you're looking at to the larger program mm-hmm. so as a an emerging leader in one of the largest corporations on the planet um what are you doing to sort of step by step systematically get there right like the scientists you can't take the scientists out of you right so <laughs> right. you're testing you're learning data. right um help us understand yeah. that a bit like what is that what does the next gen workforce look like in your opinion um with you being on that millennial line starting yeah. to see younger um folks in that i'd love to hear from you in that yeah. regard So my role as program manager is to be able to uh, identify students that are coming out of top engineering universities, coming out with a bachelor's degree, and stepping into the workforce of UTC. And so some of them may have had internship experiences or other research experiences in manufacturing or tech, but others can just be really great students who meet that demographic and may not necessarily have had the experience or exposure to corporate life or right. to manufacturing or to technology in that sort of way. Yeah. Um, and so what I am, am empowered to do is to be able to work with my colleagues to re- um, empower our engineering workforce. Thousands of engineers. My wow. cohort is only going to be 13 individuals, um, but it's... But one of them might invent something that changes Absolutely. the entire world, right? So like yeah. the power in numbers is those 13 that you're responsible for, you're going to change a lot of lives because that's not absolutely. 13, it's the 13 that can affect a billion. Yeah, right? absolutely. It just, it takes, you know, one person, one moment, one right. spark. And so the diversity of thought, the diversity of demographics is important. And I'm so thrilled that we're able to exceed the goals that UTC has had for, you know, just this small cohort. So we have uh, 10 individuals coming from U.S. institutions, five of them are women. And 40% of those individuals are, um, you know, not white. That's right. right? So there's diversity in in there as well. What's modeling, right? At the end of the day, it's like, you know, we look at pop culture, we look at Hollywood, we look at you know, what is the definition of a superhero, right? For, you know, I was talking to this, to somebody, a friend of mine the other day, um, she runs a, a organizational design and leadership company that you may or may not know. And we were talking about this idea of like the role that the Wonder Woman franchise is going mm-hmm. to play 20, 30, 40 years from right. now. And I was like, that's such an interesting thing to think about like, and I make that parallel here because it's like, the more that you are able to diversify the cohort, mm-hmm. where their backgrounds come from, who, what they look like, yeah. The more that now you're effectively changing this organization, Mm -hmm. right? This sort of old guard organization, Mm -hmm. transforming it. You know, part of the whole you know recent shift with the with the breakup of the business units is to 
invent new possibilities, mm-hmm. right? Absolutely. And I think that yeah. when I get down to this, like the, the core of what I'm hearing you say, when you think about next-gen workforce is possibility starts with mindset mm-hmm. and then mindset turns into behaviors and those behaviors help to sort of skill build Absolutely. and creates new outcomes. So yeah. um, I love that because I'm thinking about, you know, going past IQ to EQ and mm-hmm. also like, I don't know if you've heard the term AQ, adversity no. quotient. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so that's one I heard recently that okay. really blew my mind. Um, you hear a lot of that with the the work that Penn's doing around mm-hmm. grit and sort of yeah. what does it mean to, to be gritty and, and have those principles. So I love that, you know. So it sounds to me like if I was a young student and I wanted to one day aspire to become part of your cohort, aside from getting good grades in school, which now is sort of the norm, right? It's like mm-hmm. you just have to get good grades. What are some of the things that they can do as a student that to get on your radar? Like how do they like, or folks like you to get right. on your radar? So a lot of what our leadership at UTC is instilling in our workforce is, again, that diversity of thought. Okay. They, what does that mean, diversity of thought? Because I So that term. you don't want everyone to think like you, right? And so when you're bringing folks to the table, and I'm sure you do this all the time, you know, when you're brainstorming or, or you know, doing some thought leadership um, exercises, you want to have people that come from different walks of life, that have different life experiences, that have different strengths in their EQ in order to make that balance, right? Because a lot of times we rely on collaboration in order to really execute because you can't just, you don't get anywhere with just the same, the same thing. It's just the, that mundaneness. And so with respect to, you know, our engineering workforce, we have the opportunity to, um, have inspirational leaders across our business that really want to empower and inspire. What makes an inspiring leader to you? Like if if I was a leader um, on your team, how would I inspire you? What what would be the the characteristics or definition of an inspiring leader to you? Yeah. So I have my buzzwords, right? Like my top words that I use to describe myself. Um, so authenticity, which is something that we've already sort of talked about yeah, being your basically authentic Basically getting real, self. right? Like yes. Keeping it real. Yeah. As, yeah. Yes, definitely. Cool. Integrity, um, which is something that UTC, um, is really priding itself on the integrity of what we do because of the fact that we're putting people into airplanes and flying them all across the world. Um, mm-hmm. You know, as an example of Pratt Whitney, and so the president of Pratt Whitney, Bob Ledoux, is someone that I find as an inspirational leader because he exudes leadership that he cares about every single person in his workforce. So that caring, compassion, um, and also transparency is really important to be able to have those honest conversations, especially in a time of change, yeah. right, which, uh, you know, is happening in our worlds, but also in our workplaces. Right. Um, it just to be genuine. Um, so authenticity, integrity, transparency, um, those are some of the, so the just being main, human. Really? Yeah. So and, and again, it goes back to those power skills, right? Yeah. Which again, if, you know, some, some people think power, like you need to be powerful and be, you know, above to make someone feel small. That's not what yeah. power skills are. They're right. the soft skills that the human skills of deal of interacting and engaging with people. Right. That's really, I've been reading articles, um, you know, that say that that's where the leadership is going to come from. It's right. where, where we were generations before is not where we are now yeah. and not where we're going to be. Yeah. No, we talk a lot about, um, this idea and the principle around like servant leadership, mm-hmm. which is that the leader is actually serving the team. Absolutely. The other around. So I love that. So next gen workforce, um, if you want to sort of get on Jackie's level and trajectory, which is like a rocket <laughs> ship, um, <laughs> it's, up? it's about these power skills. Yeah. It's about being able to really like state what you want mm-hmm. and sort of charge after, right? right. You know, you're, you're clearly not, you're, you're hyper respectful and hyper genuine about what it is that you want to do, right. but you're not letting anything stand in your way. You're not letting your, your home life stand in the way or where you come from. You're not letting yeah. education stand in the way, gender, all of the things that would normally get in the way. So I think, you know, growth mindset is mm-hmm. clearly something we talked about today in, in various formats. Yeah. Um, I love where the workforce is going and I love that we've got people like Jackie to really kind of push it forward and sort of take that next step. Um, from a mindset perspective. Mm-hmm. I've got a question for you though. Um, you know, I talked to a lot of young emerging leaders of, of all genders and, and backgrounds and ethnicities and 
you know, question I get asked a lot, um, which I'd love to be on camera more, but um, question I get asked a lot is, how do I shift a mindset? So, you know, it's really easy in a company. I have a lot of colleagues, you know, we're an innovation consultancy. So we work with companies that are a startup and a garage yeah. to UTC is <laughs> actually a client of ours, right? So the, the interesting thing is it's easy to get jaded, right? It's easy to feel like oh, you're yeah. just a cog in a wheel at a big yeah. company, right? So I'm sure there's been some times of struggle mm -hmm. as you were in your career where you felt stuck, Absolutely. where you felt like you pushed through, yeah. you couldn't push through. What are some ways to unstuck yourself yeah. or unst unstick yourself so that you can keep pushing forward, change that mindset, yeah. you know, go be that waterfowl hunter <laughs> as opposed to just letting things happen to you? Right. Yeah. So that was a part of my own transformational year this year awesome. as I felt stuck and frustrated. Um, and so I discovered this really phenomenal uh, YouTube video um, nice. that was a, a, um, f uh, featured Mo Gadot. Dot from Google X. I, I love that. And, uh, billion people happy. Yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. And so, so we'll, we'll share that link in the description. <laughs> awesome. awesome. So I discovered then his book Solve for Happy. Love it. Oh my god, and it's a great book. I, I gave it to my sister. -in -law. Good. Yeah. I fell in love with with his just mindset about you know it's it's you you need to just feel you could feel what you feel but don't let it negatively affect you right mm -hmm. use that for good right. whatever your life circumstances are. Do whatever you need to do to feel that and to get out of that mindset because mm -hmm. that does nothing for you. That is unhealthy. And I know that you're uh, really into mindfulness and, and I certainly try to be. Um, but it's it's a matter of, for me personally, I, I felt that. And then I was like, how can I get myself out of this? Okay. How can I work on myself, my, my own mental health, right? Like um, to be able to be the leader that I want to be right um, to inspire others to empower others to empower myself and so I found his book and I listened to it on my drive in and out of work and I just I, I love his message and it's awesome. you know it's it's incredible yeah so that really was like a life changer for me back this to mindset year. right it's, it's all Absolutely. about mindset and I, the question is and it doesn't have to be specific to UTC because mm -hmm. I think this is just We'll, we'll broaden it a bit right. just so that there's no confusion as to, you know, this is Jackie's opinion, not the opinions of her employer. But like in this case is as a young, and young not in terms of age, but young in terms of the evolution of the org chart, right? right. Sort of bottom, bottom to top mm -hmm. story is really, you know, both of our stories yeah. right? in, in one way, mm -hmm. uh, in, in many ways. I'm sure you felt like people like were over you and like kind of pushing down on you, right? And they were like, kind of locking you in and preventing you from growing. It could have been a friend, a family member, whatever, you know, a, sure. a boss, whatever it is. So we won't yeah. make it specific, but yeah. I'm sure you've encountered times in your life, in school, in the workforce, where you had someone above you that you saw more as a blocker and less like a mentor. Yeah. So when, you, when you're met with blockers in life, right, when you're, when you're held down, um, especially like someone who doesn't necessarily fit all the specific norms that right. society presents itself, how do you break out of that? How have you broken out of that? Like to sort of like knock down the wall, knock down the, the gatekeeper. I mean, you're strong. Not everybody's as strong as you from right. what I've experienced. So like, yeah. how do you break down that wall? Like what yeah. are the steps you take? So seeking allies, um, seeking people that you trust to be able to bounce ideas off of, to really talk through whatever situation or whatever you're feeling has been really important. So awesome. mentorship has been so critical for me, not only just in my professional life, but in my personal life as well. Awesome. Um, finding the people that you trust and to, like, as I said, seek allies to bring people in because even if you're in your most vulnerable state, they will be able to, you know, provide you with guidance and yeah. to strengthen you to get you out of whatever that thought yeah. or situation is. And from what, you know, growing up as an emerging, you know, person that aspires for leadership, oftentimes in the workplace across the U.S., right, you find people that are um, elevating themselves for all the wrong reasons and they're not good leaders. Yeah. Um, and for me, that's just, I want to change that, right? Yeah. I want to be able to elevate myself um, and I have aspirations to be a leader in whatever sector, whatever, whatever you know, walk of life 
Yeah. I, I would argue that, that you already happens. are a leader. I think, right. I don't think leadership is a title. I think leadership sure. is a mindset and a, and yeah. a state of mind. You know, speaking of mindsets, I want to talk about just negativity. Yeah. Like, I want to talk about negativity because it's something we've both experienced a lot yeah. in our lives. Yeah. Um, people that we won't name and call out. Um, but the reality is, it's really easy when, you know, they say misery loves company, yeah. right? And when you're sort of falling or feeling mm-hmm. like you're not succeeding or you're, you're met with some adversity, whatever that might look like. Yeah. You know, it's easy to just gravitate towards other people that are yeah. in that same mindset, right? Clearly, you, Jackie, have gone out and found positive people, mm-hmm. found allies to help break you out of that. Right. Um, first, the one thing I want to say to the audience is, like, if you're wondering why you're stuck, it's most likely because of the thoughts and the stories that you're telling yourself. and self-talk. the way Self-talk. Terrible. All day long, right? Mm-hmm. So whether you go waterfowl hunting, explore cooking, reading, audiobooks, archery, whatever your thing is to break out of that mindset, I think that the idea is you've got the possibility to do it. Jackie's proof. I'm proof. Um, Hopefully you'll become proof in the future if you're not already uh, for those that are watching this. But, you know, when I think about positivity, negative people are abundant. They're everywhere, right? They're in the coffee shop. In some cases, they're in our families. Like, what do you do to sort of snuff out negativity um, as you've sort of gone through that. And again, I don't yeah. want to get too personal unless you yeah. want to, but I know that you had to go go through a lot of negative people in your life, myself as well, yeah. I know that as a friend of yours. Yeah. How do you move away from the negative and move towards the positive? Like what works for Jackie and, and can work yeah. for some other folks here? So really you just have to take that step to declare, I'm not going to let this penetrate my bubble, right? right. Put up your own safety shields um, because that self-talk, it's – it's so debilitating yeah. if it's negative. And from my experience, the people that are infusing that negativity or whatever adversity is going on, they have no concept or care and they don't know how it's inf- affecting you personally. Right. And so for me, I've had to learn, and thankfully I did early on, to be able to say, this is only affecting me. I. I don't deserve to feel the way that I do. So put up your your barrier, your bubble. And for, you know, the last couple of years, I've been saying, like, I'm not going to let any negative bullshit bullshit affect me. Right. Like, it's not it's just going to bounce off. Right. Right. And so, you know, it takes strength within you because you could certainly just go down that that hole and just be like, oh, God, well, this person saying this about me, it must be true. Yeah. It's not true. Yeah. You know yourself better than anyone Absolutely. else. You need to be able to advocate for yourself and to build yourself up if even no yeah. one else in your circle no, is I love doing that. that. I love that. I think, you know, as someone myself who has experienced various, you know, challenges, adversities, yeah. mental health issues, whatever you want to call it, because mm-hmm. um, I think all those would be boxes I'd be checking <laughs> in some ways in the, in the yeah. form is like, Breaking out of that, I think, is you can't be lazy, yeah. right? Like, I think what you're hearing, hopefully, today is this idea, I don't want to be a proponent of hustle porn, mm-hmm. right? This idea of, like, struggle, hustle, yeah. hustle. Like, you know, um, you're talking to a guy that meditates every day, mm-hmm. right? But I still, and you still find time for our families. Mm-hmm. We find time for the things, right? Yeah. You know, you're on this growth path. We're on this growth path. Mm-hmm. It's through action, right? right? It's yeah. like... Jackie could have listened to like her flavor of country or hip hop or whatever it is she's <laughs> listening to these days on the way to work every day. She popped on that audio, t- yeah. that audio thing, right, yeah. on, on the uh, streaming on her phone, right. Yeah. She read that book. She seeked out that YouTube video. She could have went and streamed Netflix and been yeah. watched uh, House of Cards or whatever, yeah. whatever yeah. show yeah. she wants to watch, right. Mm-hmm. The new episode's terrible or season's terrible. I won't watch it. <laughs> um, it was bad, but um, but you know what I'm saying. It's right. like, I think Absolutely. what I want this audience to understand and like it was some way shape or form is like. You got to get off your ass. Yeah. It's like, get off Instagram, like stop surfing Snapchat and expecting that to fix your problems. Yeah. Social media is a bubble, mm-hmm. right? You got to form your own bubble. Right. Form your own bubble, find your own path, and, mm-hmm. and then just kick ass and take names and yeah. move, move forward. Yeah. So tell me something. So how do we learn more about what you're doing at UTC? If I can apply for the cohort, like what does that look like? And if there's one thing that you want to leave this audience with that we didn't mm-hmm. talk about today, like what would that be? So we talked a lot about stuff today, which um, I'm so appreciative to be here. And thanks for the opportunity. And um, I'm excited for this to be on social media because, you know, I love social media. Absolutely. Um, So Unite Technologies is, you know, on social media as well. So I feel like with this audience, perhaps, you know, going to Twitter um, would be the best case um, because who really Googles, you know, things anymore? Well, 
We do. Um, and how do we follow you? What's your like, handle? So my handle is JKM Garifano. Okay. And so... Um, we'll put them in the link because it's spelling. Yeah. Nice. yeah so. <laughs> um, so yeah, I, I love inter- engaging with people. I love when people will send me a LinkedIn message about how can I learn more about what you do or how can I learn more about UTC or how can I learn more about the work that you're doing in the community. People is what brings me joy, meeting new people, making connections for people. So even if it's not me myself, I can connect you with people across different disciplines and organizations because having your sphere of a network is so critical and it supports not only yourself and your growth, but others as well. A long time ago, somebody told me that um, your network is your net worth. Mm-hmm. Both in the physical sense, but also yeah. in the, the you know intellectual sense. As Absolutely, well. yeah. yeah. So if there's any engineers out there, um, you know, hit me up on social. Um, check out United Technologies. Uh, you had just done a video yesterday about uh, the announcement of our portfolio. Um, What's your thoughts? Did you watch it? It is, uh, yeah. yes, yeah. So what, what are you like? What are your thoughts? Are you feeling good about the breakup? Bad about the breakup? Like as a employee of the company. Mm-hmm. Talk to me about what that feels like for you, because it's easy for me to say as a you know the yeah. innovation consultant and a digital transformation expert on the outside, yeah. like this is how it looks. But on the yeah. inside, what's what's that like for you? So for me personally, I'm excited about the possibility of us just really focusing our portfolio and knowing that there's strength within Carrier and Otis to be standalone. Right. Uh, Judy Marks, president of Otis. She's an amazing Mm -hmm. leader, and I want to be like her one day. Um, And so, with respect to our portfolio shifting a bit, I feel like it's it's a it's a fantastic move. It allows us to be more strategic independently as three different organizations. Um, Because I sat at the research center supporting all the entirety of the corporation, um, you know, I could certainly see how it might feel differently for people within um, a different niche area within a respective business unit. Um, But Rockwell Collins is renowned of an amazing uh, aerospace company. And so now we're able to bring them into the UTC portfolio as Collins Aerospace. And um, I think... I think it's like an uncertain time, but it's also very exciting. What do you think mean for the culture? So like for you specifically, like from what you know, right? Mm -hmm. Because who knows what's happening, right? But how informed are you as to where things are going now as an insider? And then, um, and obviously don't share anything that's private, of course, but like how informed are you just maybe macro? Like are they keeping you in the loop on how this is going to change? And, you know, culturally when, when companies get transformed, you know, bought, mm-hmm. sold, divested, whatever it yeah. is, uh, they go through a metamorphosis, for mm-hmm. better or for worse. So it's not maybe yeah. like positive or negative, but culturally, what's that going to feel like for you from what you've been observing? Because this yeah. is like, the news, it's been hitting the news lately, sure. but like, this has been going on internally as an internal constituent. You know things that we don't know, and we well, yeah. very confidential with what you do, share. but I think, I'd love to understand culturally how that's going to change, because that's what I'm the most excited about, is to see how... Yeah the leaders can really drive that focus Mm -hmm. and that strategic growth, but that's gonna come with some cultural changes, right? Right. When you think about innovation and those sorts of things. Yeah. So I feel like some, we're, we live in a world where you're just getting the news bombarded to you. Totally. All the time. Could be. 24 seven, right? And so now I think we're in the mindset in our own respective workplaces that we want to know information right now. Or, you know, just like, yeah, absolutely. absolutely. And so, you know, in, in times of change and transformation, you know, you're looking to leadership to be able to, you know, tell you what's going to what's going to be, you know, this week or next week or, you know, 18 months from now. And so our with respect to United Technologies, our leadership is, you know, sharing that they will be as transparent as possible because UTC is an amazing company. Uh and within our portfolio as it existed last week, right, with all of our different business units, the cultures that we have in those workplaces are um, places where it's all about people, really, right, right. because people are driving the work that we do in all the different types of domains. Absolutely. And so, you know, we need to be respectful of the fact that, you know, we have leadership that's willing to go on television and on social media and to be able to share what's happening um but recognizing that we don't know what we don't know and we should be respectful of that and just sort of have trust in 
in what they're yeah. going to be doing. Um, because we talked about negative people, right? Yeah. There's going to be so many of that, yeah. you know, in whatever um, place that you are with respect to change. Yeah. And so... People hate change. Yeah. <laughs> or they're afraid of it. It's hard. Yeah. Change is hard, right? So, so again, you just have to, you know, bring in your own with, with respect to your own self and, and don't, you know... Don't let people drag you down, right? With whatever sort of change or adversity that may or may not be happening, that self-talk, that you don't know what you don't know and you should be respectful of that because otherwise you're just going to drive yourself nuts. Cool.